CISLAC has called on President Buhari's regime to scrape the $670 million allegedly spent on security votes each year by governors. Hi, welcome to what's happening this at the top 10 stories. At number one, the Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center has called on President Muhammad Buhari's regime to scrape the $670 million allegedly spent on security votes each year by governors. CISLAC Executive Director Awal Rafanjani stated this on the sideline of the 77th session of the UN General Assembly after the launch of the Sustainable Development Goal 16 Shadow Report 2022. The Advocacy Center noted the worsening insecurity situation and captured the looming debt crisis, among others. At number two, the World Bank has approved the release of $750 million International Development Association credit to the Nigeria State Action on Business Enabling Reforms program for results. This was announced in a statement by the World Bank. The fund is supposed to help Nigeria accelerate on implementation of critical actions that will improve the business enabling environment in states. The World Bank stated that even though Nigeria has not been able to attract both domestic and foreign investment, it is able to catalyze private investment. At number three, the Court of Appeal in Federal Capital Territory has set aside an earlier judgment of the Federal High Court in favor of the People's Democratic Party governorship candidate in Ogun State, Oladu Popo Adebutu. A three-member panel of the appeal court in a ruling on Friday faulted retired Justice Taiwo Taiwo of the Federal High Court judgment, which declined jurisdiction to entertain a suit by Jimmy Adebisi Lawal. The judge also ordered remitting the case of the chief judge of the Federal High Court for the hearing of the case of merit. At number four, the National Bureau of Statistics says all commodity group import index on average increased by 0.07% with the highest increase recorded by vehicles, aircraft and parts. This is according to the MBS Commodity Price Indices for quarter two of 2022 released in Abuja on Friday. The report said this is followed by products of the chemical and allied industries and live animals, animal products. The report said Nigeria's major export and import markets in quarter 2 2022 were India, Spain, Netherlands, US, Indonesia and China. At number 5, Oyo State Government says it has begun a bill of engineering measurement and evaluation on about 255 roads across the 33 local government areas of the state for rehabilitation. The chairman of your state road maintenance agency, Ogunlade Soladoye, made this known on Friday while on inspection of some of the routes earmarked for rehabilitation across the state. Soladoye said that the state governor, Sheyi Makinde, has approved the sum of 750 million naira for the agency to ensure zero potholes on the roads across the state. He also urged the people to detest from dumping refuse in the drainage channels, which, according to him, may block waterways and result in water spillover, thereby causing destruction of roads. At number six, the Teachers Registration Council of Nigeria has called for the full implementation of the Safe School Declarations Guidelines endorsed by Nigeria in 2015 and ratified by President Muhammadu Buhari in 2019. Registrar of TRCM Professor Josiah Olushegun Ajiboye met the call while delivering a paper at the 2022 National Delegate Conference of the Nigeria Union of Teachers in Ibadan. Ajiboye noted that over 2,295 teachers were killed in the Northeast between 2009 and 2022, while over 19,000 others have been displaced and over 910 schools damaged or destroyed due to the conflict. He further stated that over 1,500 schools were forced to close due to insurgency and more than 600,000 children have lost access to education. At number seven, nurse educators under the Federal Ministry of Health have dragged the federal government to cut, seeking an interpretation of the newly signed harmonized retirement age for teachers in Nigeria. The suit number FHC 183-2023 filed at the Federal High Court Enugu. Mrs. Abba Ugo, Cecilia, a nurse educator who is an assistant director, said the move was a last resort after both the Federal Civil Service Commission and the Federal Ministry of Health failed to respond to her latest. Joined as defendants in the suit are the Chairman, Federal Civil Service Commission, the Minister for Health and the Federal Ministry of Health. No date has been fixed for the hearing of the matter. At number 8, the Police Service Commission on Friday approved promotion examinations for police officers. According to the acting chairman of PSC, Justice Clara Ogumbiyi retired, the exam is scheduled to start from 2023. 
speaking to journalists shortly after the 15th plenary meeting of the Commission in Abuja, Ogumbiyi explained that the promotion exam is in line with the public service rules. The Commission also approved the promotion of 417 senior police officers. At number 9, the Federal Capital Territory Administration have approved scavengers known as Babambolas from the colony of Katambe in Abuja over insecurity they constituted to the FCT. Senior Special Assistant on Monitoring, Inspection and Enforcement to the Minister of FCT Ikaro Attar described the scavengers as dangerous people who are largely tied to crime. He said residents, including some diplomats living within the vicinity of Katampe, had been complaining about the drug habit of the scavengers and the security risk they posed to the community. He also urged the indigents that are renting their cashew plantations to scavengers to seize forthwith. Finally, at number 10, the Russian President Vladimir Putin is set to stage a ceremony in an ornate Kremlin hall to announce Russia's rule over 15% of Ukraine, the biggest European annexation since World War II. Putin disclosed that the four Ukrainian regions would remain Russian forever. The annexation is coming on the heels of referendums in the Donetsk, Luhansk, Kherson and Zaporizhia which the West countries have slammed as illegal. Meanwhile, UN Chief Antonio Guterres also warned it's a dangerous escalation and a violation of the United Nations Charter. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.